All right, so you guys got balance equations on uh, balance equations on Friday. Uh, most of us were doing pretty well at those, so hopefully um, that you're okay on those. I have the answers to those worksheets up here. You can come look at them at the end of class if you want. I told you at, sometime after Tuesday we would have a quiz over balance equations. Um, so that'll be, we'll make it sometime at Thursday or later, all right, Thursday or Friday, because I won't be in some of my classes Wednesday due to meetings. I'll be in this class still. So Thursday and Friday, Thursday or Friday, one, you'll have a quiz over balancing equations and reaction types. Um, so today, so if that's lost on you, we'll come back to it. We just kind of got to move on to the next part for now, and we can come back to it if we need to. So we're going to look at today, we're going to look at stoichiometry. I'm going to write that fancy word. Uh, stoichiometry, which is one of my most favorite things to do in the entire world. Stoichiometry, and what we're going to, that was a serious statement by the way. So what we're going to do uh, is basically figure out, you know, if I, if I have uh, this many eggs, if I have five eggs and I have an unlimited supply of sugar, an unlimited supply of butter, uh, an unlimited supply of chocolate, how many cakes can I make? Or if I have to make this many cakes, how many of each ingredient will I, be able to, will I need to do that? And so we're going to do that with a chemical reaction, all right? And the first part is balancing the equations like we did uh, last week. One thing that we need to know is molar mass. That's one term we have to add. Molar mass. And that is the mass in grams of one mole of a pure substance. Mass in grams of one mole of a pure substance. That is the molar mass. And we're going to use the molar mass in every problem we do today. Literally going to do, I think, five problems today. Four to six problems. Five, five problems today, and that's it. They do take a little while. All right? We're going to start with this problem over here. We did this equation. Uh, it was on one of your worksheets last week. All right, towards the end of last week. I have vanadium oxide plus uh, calcium sulfide yields calcium oxide plus vanadium sulfide. All right, that is a transition metal. I'm not worried about that right this exact second. If Walter has 34.03 grams of vanadium oxide here and excess amounts of CAS, so kind of like if we had a certain amount of eggs, but we have a ton of this, so we're not worried about that, right? 34.03 grams of vanadium oxide and excess amounts of CAS, calcium sulfide, how much calcium oxide can Walter produce? All right, so this is where we're going to start. I'm going to go through this example. It'll be four steps. It'll be one, one gra uh, table, but it's going to be four steps, and then I'll label those steps, and that'll help you a lot. All right, so ready? You guys ready? Let's throw back from a month ago. Tears fall. <laughs> we will be doing these kind of the rest of the year. So, all right, we're going to start with what we have: thirty-four point zero three grams V two O five. It is very important that we label everything because if we don't, that's when we start forgetting stuff or mixing up our compounds. <laughs> we always have to label thirty-four point zero three grams of vanadium oxide over one. All right, this is what we have over one mix of itself. Now, how we're going to do this, notice we're starting with one thing. We're starting with B2O5, but we, what we want to turn that into is grams of calcium oxide. So we don't even have the same substance. All right, we're going from this substance to that substance. And so how we do that is through using a molar ratio. And that's basically going to be our coefficients up here. All right? So we're going to need to turn this into moles first. All right? So we want moles of B2O5. B2O5. And we want to get rid of grams of B2O5. 
Now this first example, you might be a little bit confused. What I want you to understand is that by the end of first and second period, almost everyone got the really hard problem I gave them right. All right, so it's okay, the first couple, by the end of class, we want to really feel comfortable with that, that last hard example, which is sitting up there on the board. So I want to put this into moles and get rid of grams. Grams is on top, so I'll put it on bottom so I can, so I can cancel it. All right, now, how do I find molar mass? That's what we're using here. That is one mole has how many grams? And how we do that is by looking at our periodic table. All right, what is the, the mass of vanadium? Look at the mass of vanadium. 50.942. So it's 50.942. V is 50.942. How many vanadiums are in this compound? Two. Two. All right. And we also have five oxygens. What is oxygen's mass? 15.999, and we have how many of those in this compound? Five. So what we're saying is one, one molecule of this compound has two of these and five of those. So we want to find out how much its total mass is. All right, so we multiply 50.942 times two. 101.42. 884 grams and for 15.999995 and we add those together and we get what? Who's doing it? We add those together. Um, 181.899. 181.899. 879 grams. That is the mass of one mole of this substance. That number of atoms we talked about the other day. That is the mass. So 181.879. One mole is 181.879 grams for V2O5. Now we have got that gone. We are now in moles of V2O5. All right. Now, I don't want V2O5. What do I want? CaO. So I'm going to use a molar ratio to turn this into CaO. And I want to get rid of moles of V2O5. So I have V2O5 on top. I'm going to put it on bottom to get rid of it, right? And I want to find moles of CaO. All we have to do, this is a simple part, people get confused, but it's really one of the more simple things we do. How many moles of CaO are in our equation? Five. Five moles of CaO. How many moles of V2O5? One. That's all we do for that step. It's a molar ratio, all right? So now we're in moles of CaO. Is that what we want the answer to be in? No. no. What do we want? Grams. We want grams of CaO. We want to get rid of moles of CaO. One mole of CaO is how many grams? How do we calculate that? It's our molar mass, right? CA. What's the mass of CA? Calcium. Um, what? 40.078. 40 and how many calciums are in calcium oxide? One. Just one, right? And then oxygen is 15.999. And we just have one of those, right? So my total mass is just going to be those two things together, which is going to be 56.077. So I'm going to put that right here, 56.077. I've canceled out moles of calcium oxide. 
And my final answer is in grams of calcium oxide. Now, am I finished? What's the last step in any of these problems? I'm going to multiply and divide. So I'll multiply all of my top numbers. 34.03. 34.03 times 5 times 56.077. Divided by 181.879. What do you get? 52.46 grams. 52.46 grams. Honey, what'd you do at school today? Well, Mom, you know what I learned? I learned that if you have a double displacement reaction between vanadium oxide and calcium sulfide, and if you start out with 34.03 grams of vanadium oxide, that you can produce, in a perfect situation, 52.46 grams of calcium oxide. That's how to get your mom not to ask you any more questions about how your school day went. She needs your reference. Now let me label this for you. I'm going to use a different color so you can kind of see. So this is our starting mass. So we just wrote our starting mass like we've done every other conversion problem. This is what we have to start. This is the molar mass of starting material. That's the molar mass of the starting material. This is the molar ratio, and the last thing is the molar mass, and I'll reread that, I know it's a little, molar mass of the final. All right, so what we have here is we start, we have the starting mass, so whatever we have to start with. Then we convert that to moles by using that starting material's molar mass. Then we're going to use the molar ratio to get it in the, uh, in the other substance. And then we're going to use the molar mass of that finishing substance to find the final mass of the product. Or whatever we're searching for. But what you should be able to do is just kind of follow this model. So by the end of the day, my goal isn't for you to be able to be given a really hard problem and just go, oh, it's this, and be done. All right, that's the goal by next week. All right, the goal by the end of the day is to be able to, to use your notes to answer the, the hard problem over there on the other side of the board. All right, I'm going to do one more where I walk you all the way through it. And then I'll do one where you can kind of start doing it on your own, and I'll do it slowly, and then we'll move from there. All right, can I, can I slide over this board? All right. All right, let's do this problem. This may or may not be in reference to Jesse Pinkman. If you don't know who Jesse Pinkman is, that's probably a good thing. Anybody? Breaking bad. Jesse requires 219.6 grams of HBr. HBr, um, hydrogen bromide, is bromic acid to dissolve an organism, which may or may not be a body. If he has an unlimited supply of H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, how much FeBr3, iron bromide, will he need to make his bromic acid, his hydrogen bromide? Given the equation, this is another equation we used in class at the end of last week. 2 iron bromide plus 3 sulfuric acid yields, uh, yields 1 iron sulfate plus 6 bromic acids. All right, so here we go. Start top left. Ireland, what goes on the top left? Mm -hmm. 
Very good. 219.6 grams of hydrogen bromide. That's important that we include what we're starting with. We include our substance. All right, got that. Now what, what do I have to do next? Hannah? That Hannah? Hannah Ruth? Oh, okay. What goes next? Not yet. I have to do one more thing before I do that. What's next? What's it in right now? What do I need to put it in? Moles. I need to put it in moles. So I need to find moles of HBr and get rid of grams of HBr. It's just a molar mass. One mole of HBr is how many grams? And that's a pretty easy one, right? It's just two atoms. So hydrogen is 1.008. Hydrogen, 1.008. Now I need one of those. And bromine is what? 79.904. What? Does everybody know where we're getting these numbers? Does anybody not understand how we're getting the molar mass? Madeline? Okay. All right, what's the answer? 80.912. So we've gone from grams of bromic acid to moles of bromic acid. All right, now we need to get rid of bromic acid and get into what we're looking for. We're looking for how much FeBr3. So we're going to get into FeBr3 and get rid of we're going to get rid of moles of HBr. What number of Hannah Ruth, what number goes in front of iron bromide? It should be iron 3 bromide. What number goes there? What number? How many moles? Why? You're a step ahead again. The next one is one mole. Alex, what number goes here? I have no idea. It's two. This is, what's our third step? It's the molar ratio. Two. Where do I get our molar ratio? How many The coefficients up top. All right, so how many moles of FeBr3 are in the equation? Two. Two. What number goes here, Hannah? One. In front of HBr, moles of HBr. This one's two from up here. HBr, how many do we have in our equation? Six. No. Six. Six. Right here. Six. All right. And for those of you that are math savvy, you can reduce those if you want. You can do one and three because you're multiplying by two divided by six. So you can do one and three and not have to multiply something on the top later if you want. All right, so I've gotten rid of moles of HBr, and now I'm in moles of iron bromide. But it wants me to find the grams, right? It wants me to find out how much. So let's go ahead and put that in grams. So I want to get rid of moles of FeBr3, and I want to find grams of FeBr3. And I need to find the molar mass of that. I need to calculate the molar mass to be able to do that. Add it up again. Iron, we just have one. Iron is 55.845, 55 55.845, and then bromine, how many bromines are in it? 
No? Three. Three, three bromines, and bromine is 79.904. 79.904. So, I have 55.845 for iron, but I need three uh, bromine. Two thirty nine seven one two. Two thirty nine point seven one two, and I add those up. My total mass for this is. 295.557. 295.557. Now I've gotten rid of moles of iron bromide and I have in grams of iron bromide. I need to multiply and divide. 219.6 times 2 times 295.557. Equals divided by eighty point nine one two divided by six. Would you guys get what do we get? I got 267.4 grams of iron bromide. So, for Jesse to have 219.6 grams of bromic acid, he's going to require to have 267.4 grams of iron bromide in his reaction. By the way, the words giant bonus are written on the side because the first period talked me into making a bonus question consisting of pretty much everything we've learned so far to see if anybody can do it. Kind of a fun challenge. So you'll get that sometime Thursday or Friday probably. All right. Gotta cover that guy up. Yes. All right, I'm gonna give you another one. I'll do this one slow. I'll kind of give you a delay, give you time to work on it. And then I'll come back and, and slowly answer it. All right, C4H10O plus 6O2, that's butanol by the way, plus 6O2 yields 4CO2, plus 5H2O. What type of reaction is this? Yielding CO2 and H2O? Combustion. Combustion. We're burning an alcohol here. All right. Yeah. I was going to say first, but H2O. To produce 18.03 grams of CO2 via combustion if excess oxygen is present how many grams of C4 H10O are necessary. Now, I want you to start working this on your own. I'll, I'll kind of slowly start solving it on the board. All right? 
And then if you really need help, ask your neighbor this first round here. Go ahead and get started. Assuming that everyone got that part correct. Molar mass should be 44.09 for CO2. Two oxygens, 15.999 plus 15.999 plus carbon, which is in your book at 12.011. 44.009 grams per mole. Yes, ma'am. Um, how do you know where you like started? I can't hear you trailed off. Say it again. So I take it from grams or whatever I'm starting with into moles of that same material. We always have our starting material, then take it to moles. So one mole over the molar mass of that substance. Does that answer your question? And then we would use our molar ratio, which we did here. What we started with will go on bottom, what we need will go on top. And then we're going to do molar mass of whatever we're looking for. Liam, do you have a question? I figured it. I forgot one point and I didn't mess with Gotcha. All right. And that molar mass, I'll calculate on the board here for you. Equal. Anybody had it? 74.123. 74.123. All right. So that is the setup. Multiply all the tops, multiply all the bottoms, and divide. So if you've already got that, hold on just one second. Let me. Calculate it and we'll check our answers. What'd you guys get? Anybody got it yet? 
7.592, very good. 7.592, 7.592 grams C4H10O. Why did you use that number? The way I rounded it? Yeah. Because, uh, I remember you were telling us, we can only measure this so far, so it'll count for error. Yeah, sig figs. All right. Now, there's another rule with sig figs that we didn't go into earlier this year, but really we should only be using two here, um, most people would tell you. But for now, I told you just use however many were in your original number, so four. 7.592 grams C4H10O. Do you have it set up correctly? I did a So it's a... Um, Bottom one is six, not four. Oh, yeah. He used O2 instead of CO2. All right. Can I slide the board? Can I slide the board? All right. Here's what I want you to do. I'll just go to there. I want you to attempt this guy. I want you to attempt that guy on your own. I don't want you to use your neighbor. You can use your notes. You can use your notes. I don't want you to use me or your neighbor. So work on this problem. When you think you have it answered, come see me and I'll check it for you. All right? Six silver iodide plus iron carbonate yields two moles of iron iodide plus three moles of silver carbonate. If Jesse has 93.26 grams of iron carbonate and an unlimited supply of silver iodide, how much iron iodide can he produce? All right, work on that and then come see me when you think you have it.